Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Forge. Forge is a two to four player board game that is roughly about an hour to play and is for ages 13 and up. And the game Forge, you are playing as a master blacksmith in medieval Europe attempting to build a great master furnaces. You are going to be utilizing your player board and of course your workers along with your master blacksmith to go out and gather these plans here. You'll gather these little contracts. You will then utilize the resources that you've gained from the forest, the mountains, and the mines in order to craft them. You'll go through the trading post to do trade with other individuals. You will go to the plaza to reuse your master blacksmith. And then of course you have unique cards in the game. Training, equipment, and development that will help you improve your assistance. It will help you to develop cards and of course create contracts with development cards and then there's little guild cards you can utilize as well that are going to give you bonuses throughout the game. This is first and foremost a worker placement where you're just trying to develop your master blacksmithing skills better than all the rest of the players by crafting these contracts. Will you score the most points by the time all five of one of these of these different types of requirements have been met? Find out the game Forge. Let's go and take a look at the setup, how to play, and my review. You. To set up the game Forge, the first thing you will do is you'll take the main game board and place it within reach of all players. Then take each of the three main decks, the development deck, the equipment deck, and the training deck, and go ahead and set them up and shuffle them, and then deal one card out right over here with this uh, guild area, the training and the development, flip over one card so all everybody has the option of from the deck or one of the discarded cards. Then take the three different contract decks. They're going to be of different colors, brown, uh, silver, and purple or regal and you're going to shuffle them up and then you're going to flip the deck over and have the entire deck face up but only the first top card showing take the main uh, marker here that indicates the active player and set that aside as well as the scoring section of the game the bottom left is going to be for scoring points or you could just simply use a piece of paper and then you have each of these different hammer areas take one hammer from each player that's currently playing the game and place it next to the turn sequencing area of the board first second third and fourth and then go ahead and take all the currency in the game and place it in the pool within reach, as well as, of course, all the different resources. You're going to have brick, you're going to have metal, you're going to have wood, and then you're going to go ahead and have these uh, jewels here. Uh, then you're going to take game boards for each player currently playing the game. Each player who's playing is going to get five hammers, uh, two workers, a master blacksmith, and have their star start on the number one. There are eight of these upgrade tokens you're going to be placing on the outskirts of their board next to where they go in the middle. So for instance, if I have this carriage here, I'll place it just above the carriage area, indicating the cost and the uh, value at the end of the game of what you get, as well as, of course, the benefits. Set aside two additional workers, as well as five currency, and then every single player is going to get one wood and one silver. After you've done that, you'll choose a starting player, and then the game may begin. To begin the player, select a player to start. They are going to take one of their hammers and place it on one of the four locations on this board here, the first, second, third, or fourth player position. When they do that, so for instance, if I'm blue, I'm gonna go ahead and select my starting position. Now I'll go ahead and select the first position. I'm going to get the associated resource with that position, which is a wood. The next player isn't gonna get a chance, so we'll just say it's green, and they'll go ahead and select the fourth position, giving them a gem. And then we're going to have the yellow player, and they will select the third, giving them a brick. Once each player's position has been set up, now you have the turn order for the round. So it's going to be blue first, then yellow, and then green. Give the starting player marker to the person who is in first. From there, you are going to start the first round of the game. In the first round of the game, you're basically going to take actions, and your actions are based on how many workers you have. And in this case, you are going to have um, one main forge worker, I should say, um, uh, one main forge guy, and you are going to have uh, two basic workers. So, you can choose to take any one of these guys and place them on any area of the board that will give you an action. Let's go ahead and go over all the actions in this worker placement. The first is up here in the forest. You can place your forge master to give you plus one of whatever the closest revealed section on the bottom is. So in this case here, if I place him down, he's going to give me a plus one to four, which is five. If somebody placed on the four, then he will give me a plus one to three, which is four. And that will be the same in, in terms of the mountain and the mines. Uh, and, well, sorry, in the same as the mountain. You'll do the same thing with the mountain, is you can place for uh, their forge master for plus one on a three, two, or one. 
But the mine is a little different, actually. If you place your Forge Master on the top there, you're going to get two resources, uh, regardless of whether or not these spaces are filled or not. Then uh, you're going to place these workers as well in these spaces, and they'll just give you the exact resource as indicated based on the area. So if I would place my guy here on the mountain in the three spot, I will get three metal. The next space is the trading outpost, and that can have as many people as you would like. So you place one of these guys here, and you can make a buy or sell action uh, for each character two times for each character on that area. So if there's one guy here, I can buy twice, sell twice, or buy and sell. And each of the values is indicated on the board here. For instance, wood is two money. I could trade wood for two money, or I can spend two money for a wood. The exact same thing can be said if you have two guys here, but now instead of two actions, you'll get four. The plaza will let you put a guy there, and you can spend two currency in order to move your blacksmith and have his action be taken again. The guilds. You can place only your main forge master slash blacksmith guy here. And when you do that, you'll take the top card of the discard pile, or you will draw two and choose one guild card and place it on the bottom of your playing area. Over here, you have the city commons, which you can either place your forge master or you can place your regular assistant. If you place him, you'll be able to draw two cards from the top and choose one. If you place your assistant, you'll just simply draw the top card. These are contracts that you will get a chance to forge throughout the game or at the end of the round. And the same is said for the city commons, barracks, and castle. It's just going to be based on the different level of difficulty, the more experience required, and the more resources that you will need in order to do so. Down at the bottom is development, equipment, and training. Development is pretty simple. If you take your Forge Master and place it on the bottom middle, you can select either action, which is to either draw to select one or to take from the discard pile. If you take a worker and place it in any of the other areas, you're going to have to follow the arrows. If you place it underneath the one that lets you get a discard one, you get the one from the discard. If you place it underneath the one that lets you draw to discard one, you get to do that. And then the top portion is you can choose either or. Next is developments. Developments are on your main game board. If you choose to place down, you can choose the Forge Master, which lets you go in either direction, and the top worker or assistant will let you do that as well. Otherwise, it's the top or bottom row. When you place a guy there, you are going to be able to spend the currency on the top or bottom of your game board associated with your development marker, and when you do so, you'll place a development marker on your board in the location. That location will indicate any bonuses you will get, as well as victory points at the end of the game. Next is the training. Last but not least, next to the forging. Training is going to allow you to do the same thing as developments, but you're going to be using a training deck. And the training deck is going to be going on the left-hand side next to your assistants, and you'll give them a unique bonus ability. The developments are going to go on the right-hand side and give you a unique bonus ability as well. They function a little differently based on what you choose to do, but you can only have four of them. One for each assistant or a total of four different development cards. The last action in the game is going to be to forge. At the end of the round, you get to forge once. But if you want, you can use your master blacksmith to forge, uh, and that is pretty simple. You will have to take the, one of these cards that you have, spend the resources required, Make sure that you have the skill needed, and of course, any additional advancements slash, um, slash equipment that you need in order to craft this. When you craft this, you're going to gain victory points at the end of the game, and currency that you can utilize right now. And you'll place this in your Forge Contracts area. Uh, at the end of the round, after everybody has taken and used their workers, because it, the game works like this. I place a worker out, I gain the action. You place a worker out, you gain the action. Once both of my assistants have been used and my blacksmith has been used, I'm done. And when everybody is done, everyone will have a chance to forge. They'll basically get to use this forge action one time. They still have to pay for everything. It's just like kind of a bonus action everyone can take. And if you have a contract and you have the resources required, plus any of the skills that you might need and equipment, then you can craft. And that's going to give you money and victory points at the end of the game. Round two will happen. And round two is pretty simple. You're going to move all of these markers off to the left. The person on the bottom will select first and can never go last again. Uh, then the second player is going to be yellow and finally blue, and they will rearrange their markers. So maybe green is going to want to go here, yellow will go here, and finally blue will go down here. And you'll gain the resources associated with the locations. And then you give the, the starting marker to that player that's at the top, which is in this case green. And the game will play out, but the second round you're going to get a bonus worker, 
And the third round, you will gain a bonus worker and a skill. Skills that you gain are going to increase your little star marker from one to two to three to four to five. The game is going to continue like this, up until somebody uses all five hammers on the different areas on the game board here. And whenever you complete one of these tasks here, you will take a hammer and place it down. There are multiple ta different tasks. You can complete up to three contracts. You can gain five skills, four developments, train all four assistants. You can upgrade all of your uh, tools or equipment here on the top portion. And then of course on the bottom is the next one. And finally, you can have four different guild types. Guild types are these little circular sections here that indicate different colors. And if you have four different colors of them, you can place your hammer down. The moment in which somebody has placed down all five of their hammers during a round, that will trigger the last round of play. Uh, that will be the last round of play, in which case everyone is going to score at the end of the game. If you want, you can utilize the scoring track or you can utilize this piece of paper. Uh, there are different types of scoring. You could, you'll score for every five coins you have and one gem. Uh, you will score for your forge points, which is going to be uh, associated with all of these uh, points on your player board here. Uh, any point cards you might have, so contracts as well as equipment and uh, training cards you might have that have points on them, you'll score that way. Uh, any of your hammers that you've achieved, you'll score points. So whoever gets, for instance, let's say you get four development cards, you'll get five points. And let's say that Billy was the next player to place his hammer down in this area, he'd get three points. And you'll do that for all of them. And then lastly but not least, you're going to get points for totaling sets of colors. There are seven different colored guild types. If you get all seven, you can get 20 points and it just goes down from there. Add up all your points, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game, Forge. Now, there's a bit more to it than just that, but I'll talk about more of that stuff in my review. Forge plays like your standard worker placement. You're going to start with a certain number of workers from the beginning of the round, as well as a bonus unique worker, and every round after that, you will get additional workers up to the point where you're going to get skill points. Uh, this game is going to involve you gathering resources, gaining contracts, making sure that your resources align with those contracts, and forging contracts to gain victory points at the end of the game, as well as currency for now. Currency you can use uh, that will allow you to upgrade your equipment, or to do stuff in the trading post, or to go to the plaza and allow you to switch and make a better action with your main, your main character here. Guild cards are associated with gaining guild um, crests here, which will score you additional value at the end of the game for having unique sets of different types. Then, of course, the different types of contracts are going to be important as well. The cheaper, easier ones are going to be the city commons. Those you'll be making things like uh, crosses and small small pieces of things, like not, not, not super complexities. <laughs> uh, city signs, pitchers, rakes, barrels, shovels, bottle racks. And they're going to cost a certain amount of resources. Some of them might give you a bunch of victory points and, and, and money, but it's going to have high resource cost. Um, there are a few of them that they're going to require a certain number, a certain value of skill as well well, and you need to just check the top of the deck to see what's best for you. You can't craft something if you don't have the skill for it. There are certain ways to gain skill in the game, which is really unique to this game here. You can gain skill from completing certain equipments. You can gain skill from gathering certain assistance uh, slash training cards. Uh, you can gain skill from gathering certain developments. And then, of course, there's the guild, which will have unique ones as well that has a little star in it to give you additional skill. Getting to the higher skill is going to give you victory points at the end of the game, and it's also going to allow you to craft certain contracts that are important in the game. The higher the skill, the more valuable the contract most of the time, depending on how much resources these guys cost as well. And so you have to keep in mind your skill level throughout the game as you're gathering contracts. Also, don't forget, every round, at the end of every round, you're going to have to forge if you can and in this game you definitely want to have a contract to forge don't just use your guy to forge something and then you miss out on the bonus free ability to choose to forge something at the end of the round it's all about trying to manage your equipment and your resources so that everything aligns out every round as you go along you have to kind of set yourself up for the forge at the end of the round if you can forge more than one thing, that's awesome. You have certain equipment and certain assistance that, that you can get bonuses that will give you unique twists and turns, making things cheaper, making things easier, giving you a bonus type of an action without having anybody technically get additional workers. So there's, uh, in a lot of ways, a lot of these worker placement games, somebody can keep going for more and more and more workers and eventually snowball. This doesn't happen in this game. You're going to be limited based on the number of workers you get until you have these four. But there are slight variations that allow you to draw an extra card here or take an 
same extra bonus action here when this happens. And it's just slight, it's nice. So you can kind of, you can kind of tip the scales in your favor. <laughs> uh, the resources are pretty easy to get and gather, uh, but brick is gonna be a tricky one that you're gonna have to gather from either the trading post or utilize certain worker actions that will let you get it as you progress throughout the game. Uh, some of the assistants are going to give you that ability to exhaust that worker and basically he'll have his own unique ability that will allow him to gather resources or go to certain areas or gather certain cards from the cer the certain decks and it provides a benefit of some sort which is really really cool in the game i like that the idea that you can forge twice but you don't have to i could try and gather maybe i can plan everything out my first round and not forge anything and on the next round i have that option to forge and i get free forge at the end because it might score me more points if i do that in that in that way I also like my player board giving me the availability of selecting certain things. I am always, always trying to complete kind of like the game Dead Reckoning, these certain requirements or achievements as, as the game progresses. I go, okay, I need five skills. I can't get five skills now. Okay, I might as well go for the assistance this round as I can. Scoring on the top of this track here is very important. You get a bunch of bonus free points if you can do it faster than other players. And some of these are more easy to do, but don't give you as much value sometimes. And so there's kind of this back and forth that you have to select from. This is definitely my favorite forging game I have played in a long time, if not my favorite one. I've played quite a few forging games. I've played quite a few games that involve like blacksmithing and whatnot. This one just does it really well. It's tight net. I know what I'm trying to do. I know where I'm trying to go to gather the resources in the different locations to get what I need to build the armor that I use to craft. And it's all, that's all that this is about is blacksmithing, crafting, and gaining that skill and perception of like a building and to be a better blacksmith. I know, okay, I need this anvil now. And I was thinking in my head, when I was playing this game like oh shoot I don't have a damn hammer but I need the anvil too but in order to craft this other contract I have to have I have to worry about getting the skill level needed which is a furnace or this saw here so I might have to start doing these first and you have to make these hard decisions throughout every round and every round you get more bonuses and have extra workers and increase your skill and it provides this unique twist to the game where I'm like okay next round I have to think about the extra worker I'm going to get and how I'm gonna to have to combine them to get the materials I need Sometimes it might be better to take a trading post action. Or maybe I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be expensive. I'm gonna lose some valuable resources. I could in fact go for something like a guild, which is gonna score me this, this free bonus icon, which is gonna score me points in the, the game. Plus it'll give me a resource that I might need. Maybe I only need one wood or one silver. I could take the gamble and go for this and it'll pay off anyway, because I'll get these bonus money and the symbol, but I could also get the resource that I need. Or maybe I don't want to gamble too hard. Uh, maybe I just want to gather straight from the forest here. Give me a, an abundance of resources that I hopefully can turn into more value next round. It does exactly what a worker place, placement is meant to do, and it does it well. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward worker placement game. I don't think you're going to see this game as you play it and go along and go, oh, I don't really like, oh, there's some unique twists and turns to this game. It's, it's pretty straightforward. You understand how everything's supposed to be played out. The unique twist to this game is going to be your main player board, adding to your equipment, gaining the skills you need to create the contracts. And that all ties into the black smithing's theme to the game. Um, I, I really like this game. I don't have a huge amount of criticism on it. I guess there are certain workers that are probably more beneficial than others, but that kind of, a, uh, not workers necessarily, but they're, uh, the, the training cards can be better than others. And there are a few cards in the decks I didn't quite get. I think they were kind of mis misprinted or whatever. Like some of these uh, development cards will read, uh, you can get rid of this work, exhaust this assistant and place this gem. And it's like, doesn't make any sense because it's a development card. Development cards just kind of sit here and give you bonus abilities. And when it says exhaust an assistant, I don't know if that's a card I can put my worker on or not, or if it's not supposed to be in here, it's supposed to be in the training deck. Because in the training deck, it says, oh, I can exhaust the assistant that it's attached to, and I can do this specific type of action. I'm not super clear on that. But I'm not gonna give it too many points against it because I think it's either either a typo or it's just missing a symbol that would make me understand it more clear. Um, yeah, I like this game. I, 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 I'm I was like racking my brain as to see what people may or may not like about it. It's, it's a pretty straightforward standard worker placement with some unique concepts and twists and a wonderful theme that attaches to it. 
It's an excellent game. I had a ton of fun playing it. It plays great at two, three, and four players. The only main difference really is the abundance of space that you're going to have in a two player game in comparison to a four player game where things are limited and it's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. You might not get the spots you want to get. My suggestion would be to play when you're playing a two player game or even a three player game, uh, you could a reduce a space on some of the sections that have multiple different locations. Maybe you get rid of the meeple at the top and the middle if you're playing a two player game or something like that. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Forge is currently on Kickstarter, and I suggest you take a, take a look at it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Forge. Like I said before, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, hit that subscribe notification bell button if you've watched more than one of our videos here. If this is your second one, or third, or fourth, or fifth, maybe we've earned your subscription. Maybe it's worth to go ahead and push that button. Help us out. Makes us want to continue to make more videos. It gives me a sense of pride and urgency. You can also check out our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot and on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch on Sunday at the same time. All right, guys, that's all you got for this time. And as always, I look forward to foraging with you next time.